for where you just every day it seems like it's something new and great. Yeah, that's kind of the landscape of college athletics right now uh, with the portal and, and it's day to day. But certainly uh, I like the way that we've approached it, you know, since I've been the head coach here at Carolina. And, and it's always going to, you know, we're always going to start with high school recruiting first and foremost. Uh, but ultimately, we always want to do what's best for our football program. And, and we brought in some great young men last year to help our football team on and off the field. And, and we've had good success with it with the guys that we brought in to our team uh, this year as well. What is your philosophy as you approach that? When you look at it, I know you're, high, you're saying high school is important first, but then what's the next step as, as you address what your needs are? Yeah, I think, you know, with the way, with the transfer portal, players can also leave your program as well. And uh, you want to be able to. Uh, keep your roster as close to the, the maximum 85 scholarships that you can. And frankly, when you lose someone, you, you need to be able to replace them. And the transfer portal certainly allows you the ability uh, to do that. And I go back to when I got hired. We lost a lot of guys to the portal before I even stepped foot in the building as the head football coach of South Carolina. And at the time when I got hired, uh, the previous staff only had 12 guys committed and it was a week before signing day, you know, so you can't go out and sign a signing class of 25 people in a week's time. So the transfer portal allowed us to get our roster numbers back where we needed to be. And, and that's kind of our philosophy. We do, we do always want to start with high school recruiting, but you also, you know, that's not always uh, feasible uh, in the SEC. And, and uh, we, we want to ultimately, I got to do what's best for our football program. Uh, talk a little bit about the excitement that Gamecock fans seem to be. There's a lot of great things going on down there, and uh, you seem to be right in the middle of it. Yeah, no, it's a great time uh, to be a part of South Carolina football. I've had so many uh, Gamecock fans. I've had so many former players tell me that they've followed South Carolina football for their entire lives, and this is the most excitement they've ever felt about South Carolina football. That it's the most energy they've ever felt, you know, with South Carolina football. This is our second night in a row of events like this, and it's our second night in a row of being a part of a sold-out event. And uh, it's great being able to come out and, and visit with so many awesome Gamecocks and looking forward to be uh, tonight. And, and it just goes to show that, you know, we have the greatest fan base in America. You see that at these events like this. And it's great for me to be able to come out and, and interact with so many great Gamecocks. What are you hearing from the fans? What are they telling you about it? Uh, just the excitement for this upcoming season. You know, proud of what we did in year one. But, you know, like me, realize that it's just the beginning. And uh, by no means have we arrived. We've got a lot of work to do. Uh, but uh, looking forward to what we are excited about what we've done already. A lot of excitement over last season, the way we finished, winning the bowl game over North Carolina. A lot of excitement about spring practice and, and the spring game that we had under the lights. And then a lot of excitement about uh, what's what's next, not only this season, but beyond this season as well. And what did you learn from that team after the spring game? What, what have you thought about it? I really like the way that the, the group competes. Um, you know, they um, – working hard and, and practicing hard and, and, and giving great efforts on an issue with this team. Uh, they're hungry and they're very driven. Uh, they're proud of what we did getting uh, winning seven games last season, but no one on our team uh, is satisfied with seven wins either. They have higher expectations and goals and, and their work ethic this summer, or excuse me, their work ethic since they came back to school in January has displayed that. Jake, I'm sorry. You had a big first year and all. What was the biggest thing you learned your first year to be a head coach? Ooh, um, you know, just that it's such a long season, you know, and you can't get too high, you can't get too low. You just try and keep that consistency week in, week out, and continue to find ways to, to get better. And, and that's certainly what we uh, what we did last season. We got better as the year went on and, and uh, stayed, you know, stayed fairly consistent. It wasn't always pretty on Saturdays, but the one thing that our guys did is they, they every, every week they came back and, and they came right back to work. Looking back at the season two, you knew you had a lot of work to do. Do you feel like maybe you were a little bit ahead of schedule of where you're going to be, or any surprises on that, or what were your thoughts? No, I mean, I really, as, as you go into every season, it's, it's not thinking about, okay, the schedule and, and time frame of how we want to do things. For me, really, it's just each and every year, let's try and uh, each and every week, let's be the very best we can be this week in that particular game. Uh, each and every year, let's be the very best football team we can be by the end of the season. And uh, and then at the end of the year, the record is what it is. And, and uh, 
uh, for me, that's kind of how I looked at it. I, I um, was pleased with what we did last season, but also know that we have a lot of work left to do also. You've got a lot of talent in some of the rooms. And looking back now for spring practice, any chance that you might be moving any players around in different positions or anything? No, I don't think so. You know, we did some things in spring practice. Chad Terrell, for example, working at tight end when he had been a receiver for his entire career and, and, and whatnot. I think we got a lot of guys that have position flexibility on offense and defense. Uh, so you always, as, as you go into the summer and preseason camp, you always are looking to do, you know, what you, what you can to make your team better. Uh, but no, I think right now we got a good idea about where uh, where our guys need to be coming out of spring practice, and, and uh, nothing imminent right now. You've made a lot of stops already, feeling like you are tonight. Though, how much do you like barbecue, <laughs> banana pudding, and how much do you, weight do you actually gain on these tours? <laughs> well, I stay pretty active as far as working out to make to uh, uh, to make sure that I don't put too much on. So uh, I have to up the workout routine certainly. <laughs> And uh, absolutely love uh, barbecue. And, and tonight, I know we have the ultimate tailgaters. And anything that the ultimate tailgaters touch, uh, you know, is going to be fantastic. So I wish they were at every event with me. I know your assistants are on the road right now mm -hmm. recruiting. Uh, what's the feedback been like from them so far? And how important is this spring eval period, you know, for you guys? It's really big because we didn't get it last year mm -hmm. or the year before. You know, so for us. It's the first time our staff has ever been able to get out on the road in the, May, in the spring evaluation period. Uh, so to be able to, one, to get out in the high schools and to meet so many of the great high school coaches uh, in this state and, in the, and, and across the country is, has been fantastic. To be able to get out and actually put eyes on prospects, a lot of them for the first time, uh, that are young players that we can evaluate is fantastic. And the feedback has been awesome. I mean, I just got a text before I got in here tonight from uh, – uh, coach Limbo, Pete Limbo, our special teams coach, and he's up in the Northeast today. And he said we got the best compliment. And he's like, I'm up here in New England, and uh, a coach from another school, a Big Ten program, bumped into Pete on the road and said, everybody in this area, all they talk about is South Carolina football. And uh, that was pretty cool hearing from a, a Big Ten coach, you know, saying that about us. So I think the feedback has been great. And it's week two for our coaches out on the road, and. We got the whole month of May left, but excited about being out there for sure. What did you think of the Darius Rucker concert on Sunday? The Darius Rucker concert was awesome. Um, for, uh, appreciate Darius and the great friend he's been to me personally and to the University of South Carolina. Uh, was an awesome show. Uh, my my wife, everybody enjoyed Nelly. I think my kids <laughs> saw a different side of their mom, maybe a little bit, but uh, with Nelly performing for sure. Uh, but we had a great time. Wife and all three children were there with me and. And uh, it was awesome being able to honor our women's basketball team and, and really just had me thinking throughout the night, just imagining what it will, you know, be like when we win a, uh, when we win a championship in football and what kind of uh, celebration and uh, that Darius will do for that one. He's already told me what it's going to be and, and uh, we're working hard every day to make sure that happens. Yeah.